What's up, everybody? Um, this video is going to be an update on Comet L4 Pan Stars. As you know, um, this comet's coming up pretty quickly for those of us in the northern hemisphere. This is the first of uh, two major comets this year for 2013. Uh, L4 Pan Stars being in March, and then in November, um, S1 Ison will be the uh, the big show. But um, since it is getting close to that time, I might as well go ahead and uh, give an update on what's going on with L4. Uh, right now it's currently visible in the southern hemisphere only. Uh, it's currently moving to the uh, constellation, uh, what is it, Pisces Austrinus, I believe. Pisces Austrinus, yes. Um, that's a southern hemisphere constellation, uh, not very familiar with much of the uh, southern hemisphere constellations unfortunately but um, yeah it's currently moving into that particular constellation uh, it's visible in the southern hemisphere only and I believe its current magnitude is around four to five I'm having trouble trying to find some uh, reliable magnitude estimates at this time I believe it's around four to five it's expected to brighten to around magnitude 2.5 to 3 uh, in early March um, and it will become visible to us in the northern hemisphere starting on March 7th to 8th. So get your your telescopes and your binoculars ready because it's definitely coming. Um, now the original estimates for L4 pan stars, um, as far as magnitude goes, um, the original estimate was to have put it around magnitude zero or maybe even brighter, uh, say negative one. Um, but unfortunately it's kind of slowed down, it's brightening a little bit. Um, that's just the nature with comets. They're very unpredictable and they'll pretty much do what the hell they want to do. Um, well, L4 is a new comet. Uh, it's fresh right out from the Oort cloud. Uh, the Oort cloud is basically this giant cloud of uh, rocks and ice and, and dust uh, in the far reaches of the solar system. That's where most of our comets are thought to come from. Um, L4 is just uh, coming from that particular area, so this is the first time it's coming into the inner solar system and uh, being heated by the sun. So there's a lot of uncertainty uh, with what L4 is going to do, the fact being that it's a brand new comet. So we'll just have to see. It's just one of those things that uh, only time will tell. Um, but so far it's been well received by those in the southern hemisphere. Uh, they've been saying it's a pretty good binocular and telescope comet. It uh, should be just about reaching the uh, the naked eye visibility threshold as we speak um, but they've been saying that it's a, a good comet to see and it's got a particularly large uh, dusty fantail so as long as that holds up that could be pretty spectacular once it does uh, finally come up to um, for us in the northern hemisphere and for those of you who'd like to see a picture of it This article from, uh, let's see, Cosmic Log on NBC News. They have a, a story on pan stars, and that's what it looks like right now. Pretty beautiful comet. It says it's got a really large uh, dust fan tail, which is nice. Uh, looks like the, the comb is pretty bright. So as long as it holds up, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, like I said, things being uh, what they are, and comets being very unpredictable, it's just, like I said, a matter of time uh, before we, we find out for sure what this comet does. Um, like I said it's not supposed to get as bright as the original estimates are saying it would, but things could change. You know, it could show up being brighter, or it could be uh, dimmer than what they're saying. So I would probably put uh, pan stars on the lowest magnitude scale, which means the brightest probably around 2 to 2.5 and at the worst maybe magnitude 4 so we'll just have to see what happens um, but when it is visible finally for us in the northern hemisphere um, it should be naked eye visible at, at magnitude 3 or 4 uh, however the, the problem is is that even when it does finally become visible for us this position in the sky is going to be so low uh, 
to the horizon and the fact that it's going to be still uh, in the sun's glow at dusk it could make it uh, a little bit difficult to define you'll probably have to use binoculars uh, especially a telescope you'll definitely find it with that um, in order to see it and it's just going to really depend on how bright this thing gets like I said we'll just have to see what happens but you can see it right here and this is on March 15th around dusk I have it set for around uh, 7 o'clock I believe and you can see comet pan stars here in the horizon and of course you have all this uh, light from the setting sun so it may be a little bit difficult to find depending on how bright it is um, but we'll just have to see what happens so hopefully uh, this comet puts on a great show for us it's pretty much going to be the uh, the starting act for a big comet later this year in November ISON is supposed to be um, relatively spectacular as long as it holds up um, it's considered a sun grazing comet it's going to get really really close to the sun pretty much fly through its atmosphere it should be really nice because it's going to mean a really high visibility comet it's going to get really bright the only issue is is um, the sun's gravitational influence uh, if it gets too close the sun could actually break it apart and uh, that'll be the end of ISON so Again, we'll just have to see what happens with that one too, but that's months from now in November. Alright guys, before I close up this video, I want to show you a little trick that you can do to help you find the comet once it does become visible to us in the Northern Hemisphere. This will be especially useful if you have a go-to telescope. Uh, I think most go-to mounts today give you the option to input a um, specific right ascension and declination coordinate and so you can go to that particular spot in the sky this will definitely help you find uh, comet pan stars um, especially if it does um, not brighten to the level we're hoping it does and so this will definitely give you a little bit of ease um, in finding pan stars uh, all you do is go to google type in um, horizons of Theramus. E P H E M E R I S. When you get the results page, click on the second link that says JPL Solar System Dynamics. And that will take you to this page for the uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Um, what you're going to do, you're going to scroll down to Features, where it says F Remedies. Let's click on that. And that'll bring you to this page. You want to scroll down until it gives you the summary of available planetary F remedies. Just go to the first one, Horizons. And that'll bring you to the Horizon system. And then scroll to where it says the, uh, where it gives you the different access methods. It'll give you a telnet, email, and web interface. Go to web interface. And that will bring you to this page. Um, now from here you can set all of your different parameters. Um, the first one, ephemeris type, make sure it says observer. For the target body, um, when you go in to set that, click on change and it'll bring you to this page here. Go down to the bottom where it says target body and it says look up the, select, uh, the specified body. Um, just type in pan stars in that box and it'll give you a list of all the specific comets that were discovered by the pan stars telescope in Hawaii and make sure you select comet C slash 2011 L4 pan stars that is the one that's coming uh, here in a few weeks so once you get that set um, you're going to want to set your location pretty self-explanatory um, just uh, you can select your your city from a list or you can actually if you want uh, the most um, accuracy find out what your your longitude and latitude is and then put that and then under time span 
so you you know a specific day that you want to go out and observe the comet. So we'll say, um, for example, I have this set for today, the 24th. Um, so for the demonstration, let's just pretend the comet's already out today and we can see it. Um, set your start time for the for today, and then uh, set your stop time for the same day. And then uh, for your start time, input the hour that you want to start um, observing. And make sure you input it in uh, universal time. To find your universal time, just go to uh, Google and type in universal time translator, and um, that'll bring you up some uh, translation tools that you can use to get what your universal time is. Um, for the West Coast, in the Pacific time zone, right now it is uh, minus eight hours which means when it's noon here in California, the universal time is 8 p.m. That will change once daylight savings time goes into effect, it'll be uh, minus 9. So uh, input that. If, uh, if you want to observe for one hour, then on your stop time, just uh, add one more hour or two hours if you want to do that. Then under step size, um, make sure the first box says 1, and then select minutes. Now, basically, give you the uh, the changes, the coordinate changes for the comet, and uh, for every minute that you have, you're observing start and stop time. So, if you have your observing time set for an hour, um, it'll give you 60 uh, different um, pieces of information with the updated uh, RA and declination coordinates. Once you get that set, use specified times right here. Um, you can leave the table settings and display output exactly as they are. And when you're all done, click on the button that says Generate Ephemeris, and then you'll come up with this page. And all this crap on top, you can just you know ignore. What you want to do is scroll down until you get into this area. And this will start giving you the uh, per minute the coordinates for pan stars as well as the magnitude and the, the numbers you're interested in are going to be these right here the 22 48 12 point five one and the negative 34 22 29.5 22 48 is your right ascension negative 34 22 is your uh, declination so you'll go into your telescope's uh, hand control software and then you'll select uh, go to RA deck um, and then it'll have you input those coordinates and then when you hit enter it'll slow your telescope to that part of the sky and, uh, like I said this will give you the updated um, coordinates per minute for as long as you want it to alright so hopefully that will help you guys uh, locate pan stars uh, if there's any difficulty and doing so when it does come. Um, like I said, it's just something we'll just have to wait and see. Hopefully it does brighten a little bit better as time progresses. Um, I've seen a couple of stories on the internet saying that it is starting to slightly get brighter. It's starting to, uh, to kind of ramp up a little bit. But um, like I said, comments are just, they do what they want to do. Um, so we'll just see what happens. But anyway, thanks for watching. Um, please subscribe. And if you have any questions at all, just please uh, please message me and I'll try to answer your questions as soon as possible. But um, get your telescope because your binocular is ready because Pan Stars is coming. Alright, thank you very much. Clear skies.